Hey guys, welcome to Surf Show and Tell. I'm Noel Salas and today's review is on a new technology by Channel Islands called the Flex Bar. Now the Flex Bar is this very bar right here. This bar is how they're controlling flex and it's also partially the strength of the board. They're also controlling flex with the carbon fiber strip here. And as you can see, it doesn't have a stringer, but it has this black line that goes all the way around the whole board. And as you saw in the animation, it's actually three layers of foam resin together to give it its strength. They're going to make it in three different models, the pod mod, the black and white, and the sampler. The sampler is my personal favorite, and it's a small wave signature board by Dane Reynolds. This is, a, this is stock dims at 5 foot 7 by 19 by 2 and 5 sixteenths, and the liters of volume is 26.7. I'm five foot nine and 170 pounds. Sit back and enjoy the show. So let's dive into the attributes, starting with the rocker. We've got a low entry rocker here that's going to keep me increase my paddle power, moving into a staged rocker, which is going to help me get through mushy sections and drive through waves that are a little bit fat in the trough. And then we've got um, a low to medium exit rocker, which is gonna keep me right in the hook and being able to just do quick cutbacks and rebound off the white water. So let's check out the concave on this board and what makes it so fast. We've got a pretty aggressive single running all the way through the board with a, just a hint of double between the fins and then we have a slight V out the tail and with this concave coupled with the fl somewhat flat rocker, this board's really fast. So let's talk about the fins I chose. Since the board has a good amount of flex on its own, I wasn't sure where to start with the fins. So I started with the Black Sticks 3.0, which have the most amount of flex because I was looking for maximum speed and I felt like I needed more surety under my feet. So what I then did is I switched to a medium flex pattern fin, which would be the AM2s and the Captain fin large. And that felt really good under my feet. And then as the waves got, they picked up a little bit, I said, well, maybe I would like the, this board with the tech flex, which is going to have the least amount of flex. And to be honest with you, there was great surety in my turns and the tech flex fin felt good. But my favorite was the AM2s. I felt like I had maximum drive. I could pick my spots and do my turns and I could be confident in the lines I was drawing. We met up with Britt Merrick at Channel Islands to get his insight on the sampler. So Britt, you and I have surfed a couple times and you've been riding the sampler. So from the beginning to even right now, what's the sampler feel like under your feet from, from your perspective? Um, I got a sampler when we first started trying to make it a model. You know, we, we scanned Dane's original hand shape. And then I think one of the first ones, uh, I think I rode one of the first ones and immediately I was just impressed with its speed, which is, you know, why Dane loved it so much. We all want to go fast, you know, you can't surf well unless you're going fast and speed feels good. So I just love a board where right when you get up on it, it has that alive feeling. It's got its own lift and flow mm. and you don't have to work to get speed. It just wants to go. So it's a board that's designed for small waves. So you need to have a board that's going to generate speed if you're talking about small waves because generally they lack them. Uh, and it does that. But what I like about the sampler is it's kind of in between. It's not like super fishy. It doesn't have a big wide nose. It's not overly flat because you can make a board fast for small waves really easily. But eventually you want to do a turn that you're stoked on. You know what I mean? Like right. you get bored if all you're doing is going fast. You want to be able to do a big gouge or a quick snap or something like that. So that's why I love the sampler because it still has enough short board sort of ethos in it, like vibe, mm. that it'll do a big rail turn and you don't have to, or quick snap, you don't have to like adjust your surfing. You know, like if you're going from a fishy thing to a short board, you get kind of like, you really got to change up what you're doing. But the sampler, you can pretty much approach it, when you think, just like you can your short board. Absolutely. It's pretty much your same stance, your same center, uh, you push in the same ways, you just have more speed more flow and you can still generally do the turns you want you know it's not a short board it's a small wave board right. but I love that feeling and what happened with Dane what happened with myself as well and we've been hearing this from 
guys that have been getting the samplers, it feels so good in smaller waves, you just want to keep riding it. So you start riding it in bigger, bigger, and better waves. And uh, I talked to a guy at Rincon today, and he was riding a sampler. And he's like, I rode it through that whole last swell. And you know, this last week was pumping. I was like, what are you doing? That's the wrong board for that swell. He's like, I just didn't want to get off it. I just like that feel of it. So I don't know that we should do that. It's a small wave board, but <laughs> right. um, that, that speed and flow is a good feeling. We spent some time with Aaron Smith, who's in charge of product development at CI for the new CI FlexBar technology, and he's going to break down the construction for us. So the idea is it's, it's an EPS board that feels closer to a PU, but you can actually feel the flex and use the flex in your surfing. Um, most PU boards, they all have flex, but I think most people and everybody who's ridden it has really felt the board's alive, but it's not chattery or strange feeling like a regular EPS board. It has a real positive feel like your regular PU, but we're able to engineer the flex into the board to give the board more flex through the turns and more drive um, as you're going down the line. So, just so we can see what's inside. Um, so you can see there is a thin layer of high density foam running across the board. And then we have a, the bar is, T, is basically a T-bar going in and attaching to the high density foam running across. Uh, this gives the board its strength from, from breaking. Um, most boards, you just have the stringer running top to bottom, and there's no internal structure other than that one bar running up and down. Now we have this bar here, which helps the board flex, but not break. So in, in the big thing is that on top of this high density foam is a layer of glass, top and bottom. So most boards, when they flex too far, the glass crumples. That's when your board buckles, all right? So yes, you still have glass top and bottom on the outside and that can still crumple. But what we're finding is by putting the glass inside on this foam is that will never crumple. You can't bend the board far enough to crumple that glass. So I've fallen on the front of my board and put a little crease in it and fix it and it never felt different. It was always the same. The internal structure of the board stayed the same. So. We're finding with Yaden and Parker that the boards are lasting them longer and they're staying alive longer than regular PUs. So that's one positive we're finding by adding the internal structure to the board. And you still have the same external, but it's attached at the rail to the internal and, it just, and the T and it just ties it all together in this little knot. And so basically we start with the deck, which is the thicker of the sheets. So we have a deck sheet and we route a slot for the, the bar itself, the flex bar. Um, the cool thing is by taking team feedback, we're able to move this bar. If you want a stiffer tail, we can move the bar back. If you want to really get a lot of flex in the tail, we move the bar forward. We've kind of found a neutral area for the front. It's about two feet back from the nose, but the back for short boards, we've been scooting it further back. And for grovelers, we've been scooting it up to give that board a little more twang as it's going through the flat spots. Um, and into the bowl sections as it carries its speed. So what we do is we, we custom make every one of these bars, we custom route every deck um, to the spec that we're gonna, that we're gonna sell it um, or the feedback of the team rider. We, this gets glued inside here and uh, this one's not quite ready yet. He's shaping him right now by hand. But what we do is we take the deck, put the bar in, we put one sheet a fiberglass, and this is just a little scrap, but basically trying to show you kind of how it's made without doing it. So we have a layer of fiberglass that attaches this deck to the skin in the middle. And then we add one more piece of fiberglass on top of that and the bottom sheet. So in theory, you'd have glass top and bottom and then the bottom sheet and that's all vacuum bagged together to get to make the blanks as light as possible. Right now, the weight's coming in about in between a PU and an EPS. So it's a little bit heavier than an EPS, a little bit lighter than a PU. All right, so currently we're doing this in three different models. We got the black and white, the sampler, and the pod mod. We're doing those in all stock sizes from, I think, well, it depends on the model, but like 5.4 up to 6.4 in that range for all three. 
Um, you can also order them custom uh, in any of those models. Ivan's building them. He's building four to six blanks a day. So, you know, we're going to keep rocking and, and get them in the store as fast as we can. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. The sampler is an awesome small wave board and the CI Flex Bar is truly innovative. It felt great under my feet and coming off the bottom, the spring, and the speed and the board's really smooth. It doesn't have any chatter. So I really, truly enjoyed this review and I'm, and I'm actually bummed that it's over. Anyways, if you guys like the show, hit the subscribe button. You can also find me on Instagram under Surf Show and Tell. And a special shout out and thank you to Britt Merrick and Aaron Smith at Channel Islands and all the crew at Channel Islands for helping me out on this review. Take care. Bye-bye. Just another day for me